sometimes the world, sometimes it feels like you and me against the world, when all the others turn their back and walk away, you can count on me to stay. ticket or you might have to pay with your soul boys girls ghouls goblins non-binary and the undead welcome all i hope you have your this halloween is a wonderful time for a scream but don't get too close or i'll pull you into the screen Take here, Frank. We would always be close friends, we said. I told him a story once, and he was so scared he lost his head. Pray to your parents that you don't get carried away. Eat sweets, I mean, or your teeth will decay. But what's scarier than dentists, doctors, teachers, or your parents? The fact I lurk in the shadows, waiting to make my appearance. So sit back. Keep your arms and legs inside the ride at all times. As we enter the Carnage Carnival, there's no telling if you'll keep your lives. I know what we're waiting for, brother. Something that will take your mind off the fear. I'm speaking, of course, of some delicious treats. Eh, eh, eh. Do you want some sweets? Our first tale tonight takes place in an alleyway. Sean never really liked this alleyway. It would make him feel unnerved. Have you ever looked at something and been unnerved? Where it feels like you're being watched, or as the cold air hits your body only in one spot. Sean knew never to venture this way even if it would save him time on his walk home day to day. Sean was a sensitive child, though he could never show it. Sean put on a brave face in front of his friends, but luckily they didn't know about his fear. One evening he was out with his friends, and it started to rain. No, poor, soaking through their clothes. Wendy, Jack, Jean and Mo were all drenched. The local field where they would hang was waterlogged and they tried to find shelter. The McDonald's kicked them out. Of course, when you're a teen, no one wants you around. Wendy was without her jacket and the boys weren't as chivalrous as they were in my day. Back in 1871, Men would give a jacket at a mere breeze, but now we'd be caught dead doing such a thing. She exclaimed, I know where the shelter, you should follow me. And they all did. She got to the peak of the alleyway and Sean froze. Not here. God, not here. I can't let them know. They all started walking. Um. I I'm going to go home. O okay, Sean. But this way is quicker. Come on. Yeah, are you scared of something, Jack said. Oh, it's Jack, isn't it? They laughed as they ran down the alleyway. Sean halted as if frozen in fear. What would they say tomorrow if I didn't follow them? They'd humiliate me. I'd be a laughingstock. I'd never have any friends. 
He ran, heart beating, a gasp of breath. He ran as fast as he could, his chest tightening, the laughter seeming so far away, almost hauntingly far away. He was sprinting as fast as he could go as he ran to the alleyway. It got darker and darker and longer and longer. And then... <laughs> Sean did find his friends looking down at him. With his haste, he had rushed into the road. A car had hit him. <laughs> Sorry. Um, he was fine in a few months, but it all goes to show. Regardless of the people you like making fun of you, be sure you follow your instincts, especially after the setting sun. <laughs> Please forgive me. We used to make fun. When I was young, we would make fun all the time. There was a song we had. <laughs> Come now, son, now don't be weary. Better keep your kids from Priest O'Leary. Eh, eh, eh. Priest O'Leary. A strange man, but didn't deserve the horrowing we gave him. He didn't last long, unfortunately. Have I showed you my pen? Boo! Eh? Eh? Boo is like everything else. He whispers at night. But you have to listen. To hear it. Story two. A story perhaps about you. This age we don't look to play in the woods or alleys or parks. We don't camp or pretend or create. No, no, no. We react. Reactions can be fun. Reactions can be scary. Reactions can be a mirror. My curious cryptids always know where to find you. The computer. We type. We text. We pose. We talk to strangers. Didn't anyone tell you never to talk to strangers? Dylan enjoyed his computer. Playing with his friends, he loved his phone, even though it wasn't the newest iPhone. He had nowhere to hide in his home. His parents and siblings were always present, but in his little black box, in his pocket, he could hide there all day. He'd have his attention. He'd be watching videos, connecting to others like him, sharing memes. <laughs> Dylan was as we all are. A little careless at times. <laughs> his phone vibrated as he sat playing his game. He checked the app quickly. Shadow guy has added you. Oh, how peculiar Dylan thought. It must be someone he had joined with the group online. Hey, what's up? NM, you? I hate, I hate text talk. It's like another language. Why can't people speak the ancient tongue of Usklubrach? Boris knows it. Have you heard Boris? He spoke it once. Hi, what's up? A message said. Dylan replied, NM, you? NM? Question mark. Yeah, it means not much. So there's nothing wrong with you? I guess. You guess. Well, yeah, some stuff. Who's this? You guess some stuff. He ignored the message. Very clever of Dylan. 
It was a touch weird. He turned in the chat. Hey guys, which one of you thin brain dweebs is Shadow Guy? Nope. Nah. Nah, no, man. Some of the boys made insults towards Dylan that I shan't repeat, um, but it was all in good jest. His phone buzzed again. You guess not much, Dylan, that there is nothing wrong. Did those jokes hurt your feelings? Here, yeah, seriously, leave me alone. And in that moment, Dylan's game cut out! He reset the game and joined the lobby. Shadow Guy has joined the game. Oh, who's this? You're a proper sausage goff, you! Dylan waited. The microphone was buzzing on the screen as if someone was talking, but he must have been talking over him at the time. What, got nothing to say, you big girl's blows? For a second, nothing, but then, only this time, Dylan realised. He heard it. Something was off. His headset was repeating what he was saying, as if... As if the other person was in his room. He looked around. Nothing. Freaked out a little, of course, as we all would be. And there was a breeze coming through his window. It blew the curtains heavy, and the moonlit filled the room. He looked around. Nothing. Freaked out! The breeze blew through his room. The moonlight lighting all of the dark. But there was no one there. Dylan shut his window and went back to the game, and a message came through. I just want to play a game with you. Seriously, leave me alone. But you're not alone. His lights went off again, but the game stayed connected. I found all about you on games online. Your hobbies, your friends. Your school? Were you there? Dylan looked at his phone in awe. Suddenly pictures began filling his phone. Pictures of him walking to school. Pictures of him playing football. Eating his tea through his window. And another message followed. You're never alone. Dylan froze in fright. The howling wind haunting the night. The hammering rain pounding in time with his heart inside his chest. We've been playing hide and seek, and now, peekaboo, I see you. The messages continued to fill the chat. Pictures came from him playing inside of his own room. Pictures looked like they came from that moment. Exactly where he was sat. How could that be? Dylan was unable to move. His body froze in fear as a rush chill ran from his feet to his head. Let's play one more game. Guess who? The message said. Dylan looked up at the black computer screen, the phone light casting on his frame. As he looked in the reflection, he felt as if someone was right behind him. He turned to see, and nothing, and looked back at the screen. Beyond sanity, and despite being frozen still, what Dylan witnessed was ever so strange. Because the shadow behind him began to wave. Watchers, what do you know about your shadow? Maybe it's where your secrets hide. Maybe we'll have to ask them, as often our skin is our greatest disguise. I've been painting, you know. Do you like it? I think it's a bit different, but it adds a nice tone. Frank likes it as it makes his house his home. Now, I'm a bit peckish. Do you mind if I have some lunch? I have someone's innards here. You see, if I don't eat enough, I get stuck in a rut. So, I'm just gonna feast 
on someone's guts. Delicious. I can hardly contain myself. Oh my god. The texture, the meat, people to me are the best when they're deceased. We all say that going for a walk is great for clearing your head, getting the blood pumping and getting more oxygen into the brain. It relieves stress and cortisol into the body. And though that may be true, what if the things in your head began walking you? Sammy had been ever so disheartened by his recent events. Others always seemed to have life figured out, and when he compared himself, he never felt as strong or bold or confident or as alive. And so Sammy's friend Heather advised him to go for a walk. As he walked, all of the truth came to be. Things did seem clearer for Sammy. The sun on the horizon showed a calming mirage of colours. The still lake aligning with his state, he began to feel good, no better, no great. As he walked and wondered, the thoughts came and passed. Sammy began to see the sense in his problems, at last. However, as he walked past another dog walker and their pooch, he noticed a strange sound over the reed grass. Ding dong, ding dong. Was that? A nice cream there. That's strange, Sammy thought. We're too far away from the road. Maybe he was confused. He's only in the trees. The sky began to dim, turning an array of colours to grey. The sun had set almost as fast as his problems had gone away. And as he turned into his regular fork in the road, the bench wasn't there. He was completely confused. He could have sworn it was here. Maybe it's round the corner. And so he began to follow this off-beaten path. The only light now was from the moon. The clouds revealing its stalking face. The silence hollowed and the dimness turned to dark. It was so cold, the frost felt as though it had come alive and was consuming his fingertips. Sammy hastened his walk, his blood beginning to pump faster, his fear reaching further. As he turned the corner of the wheat grass, he saw an opening. A big open field, and to his surprise, with the moon bearing down in the centre, was an ice cream truck, lit up. As he hesitated, Sammy heard footsteps behind him, and he decided to run to the safety of the truck and the light. Sammy all of a sudden jumped out of his skin while the jingle played once again. Do, 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 do. Sammy ran to the van. The window popped open. His and the stone-faced gazer was glim. His wonky eye faced towards the grass as the other looked to Sammy's chest. What? Can I have some directions? I'm lost. I'm sure someone's following me. Sammy paced, looking all around. <sighs> no one there. There's no one there? Is that what he said? O okay, well can you tell me how to just get back then? You don't know that. Could have back with me. They get paid. Sammy needed to buy something. That's what he was saying. I know he's a bit strange. Buy something? So he looked around, he had no other option, so he parted with everything he had on his wallet, £4.69. Please mate, I just need to know how to get back. The man pointed. So he started to run, and run he did, and it started to rain. How could this be? There was only one cloud moments ago. In his panic, he ran what felt like forever, until he turned a corner and saw it again. A big open field with a van. Sammy was furious. He ran to the sweets van. Blah. Rain pouring down. He could barely hear him. You said he was this way. <laughs> the man saying he was going to check his map. Well, Sammy was furious. He couldn't do this anymore. He said, let me in and show me the way. 
The cranky man opened the door, allowing some safety from the rain. By the dim van light, Sammy looked over to the map, but for miles, nothing. Just a map of trees. Sammy was browsing the map, looking over, confused. I thought he said I can get back to the streets. Oh, said the man. I thought I said something else. You thought I said something else? What could I have said? Sammy, obsessed with the map, trying to find a way home. Do you, the, you, you? That's not what I said. The man's voice becoming clearer behind Sammy. And then he heard. I said. Do, 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 do. Do you want some sweets? The last thing he felt was a white glove grab his shoulder. Ah yes, spooky school. It's important that you learn to be spooky. You don't get spooky just off chance. No, this is a skill. I hope you're enjoying this year's festives and I have a question for you at home. You want some sweets? Eh, 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 eh. I always have sweets surrounding me. Just in case, it's nice to be fed. I love to paint, express, do weird things of course, because sometimes it's hard being on the other side. But, of course, Lily was very similar. I mean, she wasn't as good with makeup, but she was similar. She liked to paint. Lily sat in the corner of the class, ever so quiet, ever so different. The girls targeted her difference, making names and jokes at her expense. The boys, yes, they too were off-put by her unusualness. But Benjamin wasn't. He saw the withdrawal as a sign of weakness. She was just different. Maybe she had something wrong with her. Perhaps there was something wrong inside of her. Benjamin decided one day it wasn't kind to leave her on her own. Though she was scribbling in her book, she always looked glim. Well? Ben thought, how bad can she be? Ben walked up with no pardon. What are you drawing? He said with a smile. Eh, eh, eh. Of course, his smile wasn't as charming as mine. Lily looked up at him. Without saying a word, Ben looked down. Unusually, Lily had been drawing the black first, scribbling all over the page and using her rubber on the pencil to sketch her imaginary. She had a sharp, blissless outline of a creature on her page. Whoa, that's weird. Weird? You think so? She answered without a trace of enthusiasm in her tone. No emotion, just purely blank. Now that made Ben pause because he didn't want to upset her more. I'm sorry, I'm not here to upset you. I, I just haven't seen this before. Um, it's different, but it, it, different can be cool. Is that so? She responded, yeah, 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 it's cool to not be afraid to do what you want, do you know what I mean? And, are you cool? She said. Ben was startled again. He blushed. Not really, nah. I mean, I fit in, but I'm not cool like Kieran. He's cool. Oh. She flicked to the next page and started to scribble, almost scratching at the page. What do you like to do after school? Ben asked. Hoping that her obsession with her book wasn't a sign of rejection. Yeah, what you like to do? Like, if you can't think of anything, we could do something. Her head stayed low, her eyes focused on the ground. But under her hair, he noticed something for a brief second. A smile pushed her cheeks to the side. She said very softly, Sure. Almost a whisper. We'll meet at the old gate. 
at seven. The old gate, Ben thought. Before he could think to react, she had jumped and walked away, blending into the crowd of students. The old gate, Ben pondered more. The night was one very similar to tonight, so cold that it would almost take your breath. Those dark early nights, the crunch of the leaves mirror your footsteps as you walk to the howling wind. In order to get to the old gate, you had to pass a church and a dim walkway. If you're brave enough to peer to the left, you will see the old cemetery looking right back at you. The wind blew fiercely through his coat, despite it being zipped to his neck, his hands pushed into his pockets, each step crunching before the disturbed by the howling winds, the only light, a cascade of the moon. As he approached, a silhouette stood by the gate. Was it, was it her? He couldn't tell. The figure waved. When he got a little closer, it was her. He exhaled a sigh of relief. Phew! What? Uh, nothing. In school, you said about my weird drawings. Oh yeah, unique I meant. Again, expressionless, she responded. When we get back, can I show you more of them? Yeah, sure. You know, I saw you smile earlier. It's good to smile. You think? She turned her head on a tilt. Again her eyes, they look sad, but almost lost. Do I have to worry about your parents asking me anything? It can be embarrassing. No, they're not in. Benjamin had never been to a girl's house alone before. He wondered, does she have a crush on him? They went into the house, walking upstairs. But Benjamin couldn't help but notice the house was wide, creaky and old. The ceiling was tall and the halls were cold. The rugged old carpet was coughing up dust. Is this really a house that Ben could trust? As he reached her room, his gut sank. Lily, why is it so empty? Is this a prank? Shaking her head, she gave him an empty gaze. As her hand pointed, as it raised, nodding slowly, she gave a hollow stir. As her finger pointed into the air. Ben turned to the shadow, cast by the moon's glow. With a croaky voice, she murmured. It seems we're not alone, you know. The corner, which at first was black and dim, illuminated by another light within, it became more clear as the light did shine. An attic appeared in a moment of time. Ben's breath quickened, his pulse a drum. The attic's chill made his fingers numb. Ben was focused on the attic door. He stopped to think what he had come there for. Her frame lit up by the dim candle light. In a croak she spoke. It looks like we'll be having visitors tonight. Thank you for making this year spectacular. <laughs> Yeah. Mm.